by Mick Godekin here with Orthman Manufacturing. I'm back again with another segment of the what happened on the Orthman Research Farm in 2021. Uh, today, I want to talk to you specifically about three trials that we did at the at the research farm. I want to talk to you about the the short season corn trial that we had, the fertilizer source liquid versus dry trial that we had, and the mycorrhizal fungi trial that we had. Uh, some interesting results in in a way to combine these three trials to to talk about some things that we learned at the farm in 2021. Let's start with the, the short season hybrid trial. Originally wasn't planted to be a trial. It was gonna be a demo area for our field day. Uh, look forward to, to coming to the Orthman Research Farm uh, in August of next year of 2022. Uh, we have a really nice field day that we put together for that. And it's an, I would call it an agro agronomic day. It's just talking agronomy all day long. Some, some phenomenal experiences there. Uh, not to not to toot our own horn, but we we enjoy doing it. Uh, we get to show you a lot of different things uh, it, that you typically don't see at a field day. So, so we planted the short season corn, and we get to June, late June, early July, and that corn looks pretty doggone good. And we thought, geez. Here's an opportunity, and let's think about some of the things that we could do. Why would we want to plant a short season hybrid? We planted a 92-day hybrid. 92-day hybrid, and when we take that thing to yield, we harvest it in September, and, and we're 15.5 moisture, 214 bushel of the acre. Doggone it. Couldn't we pencil this out to be something a little bit more? Typically in, in central Nebraska, we don't think about double cropping. We don't even think about planting wheat. Uh, but this is where my mind agronomically, I know what they're doing in other areas further south of us. And, and we're, we're planting uh, double crop soybeans right behind a wheat crop, another way to to add another crop into the cropping system, break that cycle of, of corn, soybeans, corn, soybeans. Adds that rotation, adds another crop, diversifies us a little bit. Can it work in central Nebraska? We're gonna find out. That's the whole reason that we have this trial. And, and so what are the next steps? And you think of things that we've done. We've planted a wheat. So we harvested this crop. And then we went through, now remember, I said that this farm is ridge till, gravity irrigated. So we went in right behind that corn crop, a 92 day corn crop, and we no till drilled right on the ridges. And I thought, gosh, there's no way we're gonna get a decent stand. And we got out there and evaluated the stand. We've got a pretty decent stand of wheat. Uh, so we're we're not going to actually take that to harvest. We're just over an acre, and I'm not going to bring in a combine just to, to harvest an acre's worth of wheat. We'll simulate a wheat harvest. Uh, we'll probably take a shredder to that and cut it high, and then we're going to strip till that, plant our beans into there, and come back next fall, and we'll have a financial analysis with that, and we'll we'll see. Is this possible? You know, can we do something different? Can we raise three crops in two growing seasons? Potentially could. Uh, get away with it further south. Uh, we have a little bit of problems with frost and things like that. So we want to see, is it entirely possible? So we will test that. Uh, we'll bring you some more information. So this is kind of a stay tuned type trial that we started at. Uh, it's going to take multiple years to make sure that this is going to work. The next one that, that we want to talk about today is, is our fertilizer source. Dry versus liquid, you know, people say, well, what's better? And I, I kind of say, well, when are you going to apply? Because I need to know this to help you be more, more informed about what you're doing. So I'll say, are you applying in the fall or the spring? You know? And the reason I say that is because we think about that dry prill, 
we put that in a strip tilt situation uh, in in the ground on the surface we need some time and some microbial degradation to happen to get that breakdown on the surface we get a little bit more freedom because we get some weathering that that we don't get underneath the surface in a strip till situation typically in a strip till situation i like to say that it takes 100 to 150 days for that frill to completely break down some frills break down faster than others because of the nature of those frills but if we give it 150 days, that's a good number to go by. We need not microbial activity. We need moisture at that time to get things to happen to break that frill completely down. And so that's why if you're going to apply in the fall, dry is perfectly fine. If you're going to apply in the spring, I caution you and tell you to switch the liquid because the liquid is available that day for that plant. And we don't have time from from strip tilling till the plant needs it approximately 25 to 35 days after after planting to get 150 days for that drill to completely break down i'm going to talk about our trial here we applied that dry fertilizer in november november 7th to be exact november was dry december was dry for us at the farm January was dry till the very last week of January. Uh, we ended up getting a, a large snowfall event. Perfect. But the ground was frozen. So we didn't get a lot of that moisture to go in uh, at that point in time. But you think about we got some moisture and we got it started to go in a little bit. Then we hit February and we froze up solid in February. I mean, it, it was 31 below zero. So it was cold. And so nothing happened in the month of February. So then we hit March. Well, here comes some rains and we get some rainfall events. We have record num record rainfall in the month of March at the farm, eight inches of moisture. Okay, that's gonna be great because that's gonna start that process. But we're at March, we're planting in, in 30 days, end of March, we're planting 30 days later uh, we're planted, we planted April 26th and 27th at the farm. And you think about that and we move a month later to end of May and we're digging plants at B4 to B6 stage. And we notice some une unevenness between the liquid and the dry. And so we started digging roots and looking at things. When we started digging roots, we saw frills that hadn't completely broke down. 11.52 map frills that just did not break down yet completely. So that's why we say that we need that 150 days just to break that, completely break those frills down. Now, was every prill there? No, absolutely not. There were just frills that were evident with the naked eye to be able to see as you dug down into that strip. So you think about that fall, like I said, we apply, applied that on November 7th. We applied this spring liquid on April 13th. Let's talk about the nutrients. Uh, did we match everything up exactly? No, we had a little bit of disparity, but what we applied in the strip, we applied with the liquid, we applied 83 pounds of N, 63 pounds of 63.4 pounds P2O5, a little bit of potassium, 21.8 pounds of sulfur and 2.3 pounds of zinc. With the dry, it was just MAP. So we had 27 and a half pounds of, of nitrogen and 130 pounds of, of P2O5. Now that 130 pounds of P2O5 matches pretty close to the 127 pounds that we applied in the liquid form. Later on, we did come back in and match the nitrogen up with the side dress application. We, however, shorted ourselves across the board of 21.8 pounds of sulfur and 2.3 pounds of zinc. Is that enough to really make a, a large amount of change in that, in that crop? Probably not, uh, because we did apply 
21 pounds, 21.8 pounds of sulfur and 2.3 pounds of zinc in a side dress application during the season. So we did supplement some of that, but not all of it. If we look at those results and we had tremendous corn uh, in this trial. Uh, first eight rows of, of the dry fertilizer was 294.3 bushel. The second was 293.9 bushel, a very consistent yields across the boards uh, between repetitions. Happy with those results. Then we look at the liquid, 301.5 in one rep. The other rep was 297.7. So you take that out and average them, average them together. We were 294 for the dry, 299.6 for the liquid. We had great corn. What about that extra six bushel? Was it or four to six, five to six bushel? Was it enough to pay for the extra expense of the liquid? So let's go through the math here. The dry cost is $61.25 compared to $81.11 for the liquid. We used a consistent grain price of $5.08 across the board, giving us a revenue of or net revenue, let's let's go to the net revenue. Average net revenue for the dry was $1,432.67. Where if we look at the liquid was $1,440.71. So a little bit more profitability, about eight bucks there uh, for the liquid per acre. $8 an acre is, is a good amount uh, of profitability to have in my opinion. But is there that much difference in that for your farm? That that's your decision. You know, you think about you think about it. We didn't make enough to pay for the extra expense, and, the, and still make more with the liquid. But do we want that expense up front? That is your call as a grower uh, to see which system fits your farm. But we do have the capabilities of making making strip till applicators to do either liquid or dry or liquid and dry together. The next trial, uh, mycorrhizal fungi to me is a, is a phenomenal part of, of the microbial system in the soil. I, I think about things as, as we know the human gut, we know the animal gut, we don't understand the, the microbial system in the soil to that extent. Once we do, uh, there's going to be some phenomenal things happening in our industry and in, in agriculture because if we can match up the right the right microbial system with the right soil, it, it'll, it's going to be huge. Mycorrhizal fungi, uh, can we add some bugs in a jug and, and improve yields? That's, that's the whole goal of this. Uh, I, I look at the picture here and and myself and, and Michael Peterson were out digging in a field last summer and, and we were able to actually see mycorrhizal fungi with our eyeballs. Uh, that's, that's a picture of mycorrhizal fungi there growing in the soil. And what they do is, is they help bring nutrients into the, into the plant, especially phosphorus. It, it helps us manage our phosphorus better, uh, make, make some phosphorus available that typically isn't available, also gets it to the root zone because we can't take phosphorus up by mass flow. It has to be root interception. So uh, those mycorrhizal fungi really help us to get that phosphorus where we want. We utilized a product called Endoprime, at two ounces per acre. It has five species of mycorrhiza that they've isolated uh, and feel that that's helping improve phosphorus fertility or improve nutrient uptake as it, in general to the, the corn and soybeans. So we wanted to test this. Uh, I had actually experienced this product in the past uh, and had a good good results with it. So once again, there's, there's a closer view of that mycorrhizal fungi and you can see the hyphae there. And to me, this is exciting and, and I'm a nerd. So uh, I think it's pretty cool to see. So you look at the results though, our check was 310 bushel corn. I mean, this is phenomenal corn, no matter what. Uh, 
we look at our check at 310 bushel and we get much better. And when, when we ratchet yields up and increase yields, it's harder to see a difference in yields when we do things. Uh, we were very, very happy to see a 4.2 4 bushel increase when we added the endo prime. So we were at 314.5, our highest yielding corn on the, on the research farm. Product cost us about $8.50 to put on. So we got a, a revenue change of $21.48, and net revenue from applying that product of $12.98 an acre. To me, that's 153% return on investment. If you go to the banker and say, hey, I got a product I want to apply, uh, data's showing 150% return on investment. I think he's going to loan, loan you the money to do it or, or say, go ahead and do it. I think it's a good idea. And to me, this is something, this is another tool of the, in the toolbox. Are those five mycorrhizal fungi the right five? I don't know. They certainly worked in this case. It's, it's worth looking into. You know, as, as I think about this, I encourage everybody to, to always be thinking about how they can improve, how they can get a little bit more yield out of their farm. Uh, don't save yourself into, into poverty. Rather than save yourself into poverty, poverty look at ways that you can make more uh, less. Uh, I, I think of growers growing too big and spreading themselves too thin. Uh, maybe in my mind, maybe concentrate on doing better with what you have to make more profitability there. Here's a way that we can improve profitability just from our one data set. And, and I know we need more data on this, but I can improve my net revenue across my farm for by 13 bucks an acre call it 12 bucks an acre, whatever math you want to use. If I can improve that revenue by 10, 12, $13 an acre, what can that do? Take, you know, figure out how many acres I have and, and multiply that across every acre. We could make a lot, a lot of change without a lot of growth and put a little bit more money in our pockets. So just a thought. With that, I want to say thank you for your time. Uh, we look forward to, to bringing you more segments of, of what happened at the Orthman Research Farm in 2021. Uh, be safe out there. Thank you and have a great day.